experts, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon. It's really a great pleasure to be here. I wish I had been here earlier to have a view of the presentations, but then I missed this opportunity because I was busy elsewhere, but it was very important to be here to attend this very eventful seminar. I will not repeat what uh, has been said here, but certainly like to refresh my memories of last year's devastating flash floods out of climate change, which damaged very large swaths of uh, Pakistan's fertile land. Standing crops were all washed away. Millions of houses were completely damaged or partially damaged. And I saw for myself uh, flying over Sawat Valley, hotels which were built in the middle of riverbed, they were completely demolished. I saw other important places in KP totally washed away by fast currents of the water. The prawns of Sindh looked like Indus River flowing all over. So all in all, <clears throat> this was probably the most most devastating flood I had seen in my entire lifespan. But then the government of Pakistan, along with the, our uh, stakeholders and foreign donors, friends, they all came to our rescue and it was a great teamwork. But even today, while we have spent billions and billions, the work is still not finished. And I think the most important thing is that, God forbid, if there's a repeat of, uh, God forbid, of last year's floods, what will happen? My friend has spoken about uh, 0.7% contribution. But I must say, at uh, Sherm al Sheikh, through brilliant diplomacy, Madam Sherry Rahman, our Foreign Minister, Secretary General of the United Nations, they all <clears throat> contributed immensely to get this concept of uh, loss and damage over there. But the point at issue is, and uh, our honorable heads of uh, international institutions, they are uh, present here, like to sum it this uh, point for their very kind consideration, that what is the fault of the countries like Pakistan having no contribution in greenhouses emissions our uh, contribution is less than 1% probably. And yet, we face this uh, uh, crisis of uh, unknown consequences and then suffer not for one year, but for decades. This is something I think we need to really ponder over. Because, uh, and then in the end of the day, we are uh, granted loans to be paid back and then granted uh, loans again to be paid back. This is a vicious cycle and this needs to be addressed too in its real perspective. So what is the solution? I think that is uh, for this August assembly uh, represented by great experts, great minds, 
to advise the government of Pakistan as to how to deal with this menace. Because uh, just hoping that it will not happen uh, will not work. I mean, if God forbid we have uh, even a semblance of last year's devastation, what will happen? We are still dealing with IMF's uh, program, which was uh, stretched uh, with great effort and support of our friends. And Sherry Rahman today uh, took the hell out of us by scaring us what could happen, God forbid. Ladies and gentlemen, I would say that a uh, developing country like Pakistan needs hand-holding because uh, this debt trap is a death trap. We are uh, scarcely we are able to meet our two ends together. Look at our yawning gap of our imports and our exports. And then to fill the gap is a very big challenge. And then on top of that, if we have such terrible natural accidents, then we need extra money to deal with that particular situation. I think uh, this is the question we need to answer. And I'll plead with all of you to kindly think of it and come forward with solid recommendations, which can then be implemented in little spirit. Finally, I'd like to thank all our donors for their very valuable and timely support and contributions. And I would like to extend my heartfelt Mubarak Baad to Sherry Rahman Sahiba for uh, wonderful diplomacy in Sharmul Sheikh. I know she was, you know, running from pillar to post. And uh, finally, along with the support of uh, Secretary General of the United Nations and other friends, we were able to have this concept of loss and damage accepted over there. Whether it's part of 0.7% or on top of it, you need to clarify this position. I can't answer this question. Can you? Pardon me? So then we are back to square one, aren't we? Ladies and gentlemen, therefore I want to say one thing very clearly and something I've been repeating over and over again in the last few months, in the last few days, that we need to stand on our own feet. We need to draw a plan which is uh, in the interest of Pakistan. We need to work hard. We need to work untiringly because uh, after all, such calamities have hit other countries as well. But uh, as a result of climate change, probably Pakistan is one of the first 10 victims around the globe, which is uh, absolutely horrifying. And uh, it can happen to another country with no fault of that country like ours. The answer is that let's accept the challenge work hard, have a plan, not waste time, make use of this time and save Pakistan and our generations from such calamities for all times to come. Thank you very much. Pakistan, Pahindabad. Pakistan, Pahindabad, Wazir Azam, Shahbaz Shreef Takrib sa khitab kar rahe thay, unki jwanib se mahawaliyati tabdiliyon ke hawale par baat ki gai, muskil bakt mein dos mualik nai bhoa saad diya, aur unho nai bataya ke jis tarah se salab aur barishon nai nuksan kiya, اور موسمیات تبدیلی کے نقصانات سے نبڑنے کے لیے اہم فیصلے کرنے پڑے تو وزیراعظم شہباز شریف تقریب سے خطاب کر رہے تھے موسمیات تبدیلی کے حوالے سے انہوں نے بات کرتے ہوئے کہا کہ دنیا پر بہت بترین اثرات چھوڑے ہیں اور بترین سلاب کا سامنا کرنا پڑا ہے ہمیں سلاب کی وجہ سے لاکھوں اکڑ پر 
کھڑی فصلیں تباہ ہو گئی ہیں مشکل وقت میں دوست ممالک نے ہمارا ساتھ دیا ہے موسمیاتی تبدیلی نے دنیا پر برے اثرات چھوڑے ہیں اور اس وقت شہری رحمان بھی سامنے موجود تھیں اور انہوں نے بہترین ڈپلومیسی پر ان کو مبارک بات بھی دی